This movie discusses my take concerning ancient acoustic levitation, my Rosetta B mechanism, and the conception of my ebook, The Jericho Key, the third edition of which is available from Amazon Books. It was around 60 years ago a boyhood friend casually mentioned he'd been reading about an ancient pagan king. We were in our mid-teens when Ron remarked that King Bladud of Bath knew how to levitate huge stone blocks by simply striking them with an iron or ebony rod. I thought little of it at the time, but this seed of information stayed tucked away in my mind. Yes, that seed had been sown, and it lay dormant for around 30 years. For it was about 30 years ago, having caught the writing bug through my treasure book, Spirit of the Stones, I embarked on my science fiction fantasy, The Jericho Key. At that time, I had use of a Commodore business computer with a daisy wheel printer. I was able to print out my manuscript as it developed. In fact, I produced several stages of presentation mock-ups, but, alas, could never find a publisher. The work was shelved, but not entirely forgotten. In the meantime, I'd been working on several other projects, one of which was an animated Model B. The device was improvised from many odds and ends, and made to signal a short message in semaphore Morse code, and another cipher. Then, this contraption was quite small and fragile. Sadly, it was broken by a well-known celebrity. It too became a castaway, until a friend of mine made the fatal suggestion. Why not repair it? Oh dear, Dan, you really started something. And so out came my box of come-in-handy bits and pieces. Out came my pliers and soldering iron. Out came my glue and plaster, my coloured felts, my nuts, washers, my bolts. I decided that, if the device was to be reborn, it should perform more than its original concept. It was to be like the famous ancient Rosetta Stone. It would be the key the cipher to basic codes contained in the Spirit of the Stones and in the Jericho Key. This led me to look more closely at the origins behind the notion of stone levitation. The hieroglyphs upon ancient Egyptian structures gradually spoke, not in words, but in pictures. I viewed them as illustrations and diagrams of factual practices. To me, Instruments such as the staff rod of Horus, the jed pillar, and the ankh were not merely forms of ceremony, but were actual tools. The wriggling serpents and upward thrusting arms of the ankh, the vertical procession of baboons, are symbols of vibration and lift. Could the jed pillar have been both a giant stethoscope, firstly to sense the resonance of bedrock, and then, by means of stacked bezo crystals between diaphragm plates, create tuned feedback to enhance both the bedrock pulse and the target stone to be lifted. The upper part of the jet pillar does appear to be some sort of amplifier pile with sensing antenna on top. Then there were the mysterious huge tuning forks hidden away within a locked room in an Egyptian museum. The hints for these are in ancient carvings elsewhere. Also, how were such massive stones shaped and moved with such precision? Examples of these are in many countries. And what about the truly colossal ones? How were they transported and erected? So, back to my Rosetta B. You will see that it grew and changed in this renovation. A redundant Lazy Susan makes a swiveled platform. A computer power unit supplies a windscreen wiper motor, which is housed within a cover, having mysterious hieroglyphic codes. 
The motor also drives a resonating glass. A plinth with power press buttons slots into position and a concealed switch can supply a press button or permanent power, all finally enclosed in a tailored Perspex case. And here it is in operation. Now running in permanent mode. The hexagonal panels around the base plinth describe various aspects of the conception and developing theory. Initially, on the title face, there is a brief description of the Jericho Key. Face 2 presents the ancient belief that bees were the tears of the sun god Horus and carried the divine knowledge that was commandeered and suppressed or frozen by those seeking selfish power. My badge depicting the Horus eye with the bee tear symbolises the thawing of those frozen tears, thus representing disclosure. These two panels on the third face illustrate the theory of ancient levitation. And, on the fourth face, are some of the great minds that show the way. There remains some controversy about John Warren Keeley's work, but it was very much aligned to the subject. Edward Leeds Skelman is of particular interest, as he actually practiced the concept in the 1920s. Nikola Tesla's contribution is boundless. His experiments and demonstrations were quite stunning. Winfried Otto Schumann discovered that the resonance of the Earth was 7.83 Hertz. Michael Tellinger is currently investigating stone resonance nationally. And Dale Pond continues with the research of John Worrell Keeley. When the power cables are properly threaded, although the turntable cannot be spun round and round, it does allow a wide turning angle so that all sides can be viewed from a static position. Please note, this edit is dated January 2016. 
The filming was done 12 months ago, since when some features have been modified. I'm delighted to have just heard that the scientists at LIGO Laboratory at Caltech have discovered gravity waves. Okay, so a lot of this is only theory, but it cannot be denied that there remains a massive mystery about how the ancient megaliths were shaped, transported and erected. I realise that this two-dimensional illustration is very simplistic and the concept of gravity waves must be visualised in the four dimensions of height, width, depth and time. We can hear gravitational waves, we can hear the universe. So what we have done is taken the real signal and shifted a bit in frequency, but it's still the real signal. With my signalling B, I only hope to stimulate awareness and curiosity. If you are at all interested, please net search acoustic levitation and image search ancient fitted stones. To end this movie, here is my introduction to the Jericho Key. Have you ever wondered how ancient man built the pyramids? How such men moved those massive blocks of stone? Have you ever dreamed you could fly like a bird? This exciting story starts with a journalist interviewing a young man who, as a boy with his friend, had been blessed with the power of flight. Their amazing aircraft was the magical stone, El Custas, the bird stone. Formed from 36 interlocking elements, it had once been the keystone of the great walls of Jericho. Its shape was that of a coffin, and it flew in crisp moonlight. It frightened many simple country folk, but it was lusted after by the evil power-crazed villains, the outcasts of a worldwide secret society. The mysterious means of levitation was by vibration, tuned to the resonance of earth and the pulse of gravity. This has been a long-held theory of this author, but only recently has it been scientifically proved that there are such things as gravity waves. Robust humour, secret codes, a frightening incident and a twist at the end. A great package of treasures and many thanks for watching